rear tire here of Kevin Kunkun, though. This is what he looks like when he's going full gas. Joris Neuvenhaus, 2018, um, was, if you look back, in his, that's his best result in Houston Zolder as a pro. So third is his best World Cup finish. Third best World Cup finish for Kevin Kuhn on the front in Val de Sole this season. That was a breakthrough time. Vanderpool on the track. Uh-oh. Oh, ho, ho. Hey. <laughs> We know we the, Matthew Vanderpool though he he's one of those riders that that grew up you know jumping around the woods on his on his BMX didn't he that's uh, that and a lot of riders did and Kevin Coon clearly did that as well. You know yeah we I remember seeing on Vanderpool's uh, social media he'd go out and do like the BMX track with his mountain bike and do some tricks off of it and stuff like that. This is years ago, but yeah he definitely is not afraid of getting getting a little bit uh, crossed up when he's out there on his mountain bike and on his cross bike. We've Famously, you know, he's he's done some serious, serious tail whips back in his uh, back in his days. <laughs> Kevin Kuhn as well, that l beautiful little manual. Then into the rhythm section here um, for the Swiss man. This chasing group, the podium though, Jeremy is still very, very, very alive here at the moment. It's 59 seconds between Vanderpool and this chasing group, but there is some there is some opportunities from this chasing group for some real career best World Cup results. I think Kuhn's got to seriously got to punch it out here. He's going to he's got to keep going. He's yeah. Don't look back Kevin. just keep going, man. He's got a good opportunity here. He's got Easter a bit Swex clearly, uh, you know, shot his shot. But now they're going to sit up a little bit. I would have loved to have seen it just continue to be pushed up. This is Van Putin now. This is I was thinking about him here. If I think back to Val Sol when he was super, super good in the snow, Kuhn's, uh, he's been sitting back. You know, Van Putin hasn't shown himself yet. He hasn't played his hands. So there might be something here from the young Belgian to be able to sneak nap these guys in that final uh, after the stairs but I really do believe their big moment is coming where they're going to come into those stairs it's going to be someone that hits those stairs super fast clips back in punches an effort over the top holds that all the way through a good five minute effort to be able to establish something it's going to take sheer power to be able to snap these guys and it might come down to a sprint but there's still going to be a race right to that road are indeed now Niels van der put a second in the World Cup in Val de Sole and it was uh, his, it wasn't the best day out for his teammate Matthew van der Poel because I think someone uh, <laughs> said something about last week's course in Benidorm being uh, one of the toughest of the season and I think he said yeah you clearly weren't in Val de Sole but uh, <laughs> the, he had a great day out there second that was a uh, career best result in a World Cup um, from him and he's been one of those riders that we've Again, just watched grow, develop, grow in stature and really settle in as an elite rider. You can see Matthew van der Poel this time just taking those steps a little bit gingerly, just scrubbing off just a little bit more speed before he uh, he dismounted. Yeah, he's got a he's got a one minute buffer over the group, one minute and one second. So he doesn't need to push it or to, to have any mistakes. He's definitely done his big 30, 30 plus minutes of efforts after blasting out of this group. But now, Marty, watch. This is the stair section that I'm talking about, where I really believe that the fireworks from this group are going to go down. What a great race we've got. We've got so many riders here tucked right into this group. I mean, anybody, even Boros down in 10th, he's got an opportunity to, to be able to do something here. So let's let's see what can they do. It's great to have a bunch uh, race for the podium uh, as Van der Poel takes that. Isabit comes through to the front. Van der Putter is right with him, but he's Eli Isabit as well. Final lap will just punch it. You can see just digging in on those corners, just that lower central gravity for Isabit. <laughs> really uh, excels on really technical courses. The winner here last year over Tone Arts on very, very different conditions, but just grabs that bike on the steps and then the remount at the top. And you can see it's still uphill as Isabit punches it up yet again. Big effort now from Isabit. Yeah, this is the moment right now. I think that you've got to focus here. It's it's about keeping it going. There's a big, fast, super fast. I said there's going to be some some you know a little bit of uh, risk taking throughout this. Watch as Vanderputa goes there. One bike length between he and Easterbit. He's getting super wide on the track. Now you're going to see Easterbit punch it right back up to speed here as best as he can. He's the one that wants to be second on the podium. Vanderputa's got to react. They go through this section, then they fly back down all through here. This is a super fast ascent, but it's about stitching these sections together, right? It's 
It's about all the risk, the reward. And then when they get back to that long right-hander, that's when the effort starts to go all out up the climb. You see Easter, but do I have any gap? Two bike lengths, maybe. But now it's going to be up to everybody to see if they can hang on. Can Easter bit solidify second spot here, or is this going to come down to a sprint? Look at this. This is where Matthew Vanderpool went early. Easter bit now ups the prey pressure as they go into the climb. Joris Neuvenhaus, though, attack. Easter bit, can he carry the speed all the way up the climb? The Balwaza Trek Lions rider leading that chasing group behind. Here comes Swake, the World Cup winner. Has he got anything left on this climb? Swake now ups the pace, trying to close it now up to Ely Isabet. And he's gradually, Jeremy, just closing that gap up. Yeah, you're going to leave it late potentially and just make a last lap pass and then get onto that road section first. There isn't really an opportunity to sprint. All that racing is going to happen on those steep kind of banks leading into that finish. So there's a, there is plenty of racing to go. This is a wide enough course where someone can pass, but I was expecting a very explosive effort there, but it's just too fast. The riders are too evenly matched to make a big difference. So let's see. Sweck and Easterbit, a Ooh, duel that we know. Sweck. Yep, Sweck able to come right past Easterbit there with a problem. Easterbit looks like a drop chain, but he's shuffled himself out now. You can see, as you said, everyone's pushing it. The risk reward there on the uh, final lap. Sweck, World Cup winner, looking to try. And so they're up there with a second place today. He sat back and Ailey Easterbit, you can see now on the front was lighting that one up and the uh, camera angle on that off camber as can Joris Neuvenhaus now close this up as we said third is the best finish for him in, a, in an elite World Cup Clan Clement Von Torini, the French champion who comes over the top of Kevin King. can he get himself back in to a podium position there's Gerben Kuipers Mikko Boros and Ely Isabit of the Power Sales and Bingo team but back up to Mathieu Van Der Poel here of the Alperson de Koenig team what a ride Another vintage Vanderpool performance. It's his 149th career cyclocross a victory. And he finishes this year's World Cup with a victory in front of the French crowd. The, the confetti cannon uh, flies for Vanderpool. Swake has still got second spot here. He's got a oh. good gap over Neuvenhaus on the bank. Neuvenhaus kicks it up there. Yeah, Swake is uh, almost now. He's got uh, one descent and a corner to go before a we second place today. We'd love to see Venturini here on French soil do a World Cup podium best, but let's see what's going on back there. Is it possible? Sweck clearly got second lined up, but it does look like a good race between Venturini as well as Joris Neuvenhaus. Can Venturini get that? Look at him go, Marty, right now, swinging left and right. Oh, everybody's on the limit. Look at the face of Clamo Venturini here, who makes it up to Joris Neuvenhaus, but does he have enough time left? It's going to be second for Sweck. Neuvenhaus out of that bottom corner, kicks it up to pace. Swick Wake takes second, Neuvenhaus takes third, fourth for Von Torini, fifth for Van der Putter, sixth for Ryan.